Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Cooler Tops. I'm super pumped for tonight. I've got a brand new lens I'm going to test out and I've never actually been to this location. So let's push on with this hike and get to where we're going. Now I know what you guys are thinking, surely with the hiking gear, my cameras, all the vlogging gear that's in my bag, there's not enough room for a sneaky little beer. Well, you'd be wrong. There's always room for a sneaky little beer on these little adventures. Now, like I said, I haven't been to this location before and I can see an opening in the tree line. I can start to see, see the horizon and man, I'm excited. I found this spot on Google and I've driven past this location dozens and dozens of times to get to other locations. And I always thought, I wonder if that's got a really good outlook to the west and Google reckons it does. So let's go and check it out. What an absolute magic spot. This is just absolutely phenomenal. Now one downside about not actually being out here before and sort of trying to scout locations at the last minute is this doesn't really line up where I thought it was gonna line up. Now this awesome pinnacle or peninsula that comes out here on this cliff, I was hoping it was gonna face a little more in the southwest direction. It pretty much points due west. So the whole idea was to get a nice panorama of the setting Milky Way with this tree here in the dead center, but it's not really gonna work out that way. So I'm gonna to need to spend a bit of time and have a bit of a look around and um, try and find some compositions that work. And as you can see, it's just sheer cliffs either side. And I, I don't even wanna know how far it is to the bottom, but I'm gonna to have to be really, really careful tiptoeing around here tonight, making sure that I don't make any any false steps because that'll be the end of me. So I'm just gonna have a look around and try and figure out some compositions. So I've had a bit of a scared around and I've come up with a couple of different compositions that I think might work. And I'll, t I'll tell you what, this is so sketchy being up here, walking around up here with all these jagged rocks and whatnot. Man, I'm gonna have to take it easy. So the first composition I've come up with is this tree. So I've switched perspectives around and I'm now looking back towards the east and those who know stars, you'll be able to pick out the core up there behind this tree. It actually lines up really, really well. So I'm gonna start the night off with a bit of a verdi rama, stack a bunch of images, might even do a bit of hydrogen alpha. Um, and just get a perspective this way, using this bit of a pinnacle as a, a leading line up to that tree. Essentially, just trying to make the most out of my time here and I'm gonna shoot that panorama in that western sky later, but why not get another one, another image if we can? So that's the plan for that. Let's try and not fall off this cliff. So that's the foreground all taken care of. I ended up with settings of f1.4, ISO 800, and two minute shutter speeds. I shot three panels wide in the portrait orientation just so I could get that tree and a bit of the rocks uh, all in one single frame so I didn't have to try and blend uh, on those rocks. And I guess at some point we need to talk about gear because that was the whole reason for doing this trip was to test out this new lens, which is the Sigma Art. 24 1.4 the dg dn version the new mirrorless version not to be confused with the old dslr version but why why would i go back to a 24 mil when you know a lot of you guys know me for shooting a, a lot longer focal length mosaic milky way mosaics and i decided to step back to a 24 for two main reasons one is foreground so a lot of my images that i've taken i'm a long way away from whatever the foreground object is because 
with a longer focal length, you just have to be. It's really, really challenging to try and get anything close to the camera because the depth of field is so shallow, shooting at f1.4, 2.8, things like that. And you've simply got to shoot so many images to get a foreground done. So you're just investing hours and hours and hours in a foreground. And you're not even, not even guaranteed that it's all going to stitch together. So that's one reason to go back to a 24 mil is to make foregrounds a lot, a lot easier, um, especially shooting at wide apertures. And the second reason is swapping resolution for integration time. And what I mean by that is, if I spend two hours shooting a panorama with a 40 mil lens, um, you know, I might shoot 40 images to get that panorama to work. Um, if I step back to a 24 mil, I might only need, you know, 15 or 20 images. And what that means is I can invest the same amount of time, but then stack each individual panel. So get a lot more integration time in the whole sky without investing any more time than what I would if I was to shoot a 40, 40 mil panorama and just do single individual frames. So that's the reason why. And I don't know if I'm going to stick with this, to be honest. I'm just like you guys, you know, come out, try new things. And if it works, cool. If it doesn't, well, I'm out here shooting anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It's just awesome being out here. So anyway, let's get into this sky. I think I'm going to do probably a four panel mosaic for the sky. Um, in landscape orientation with the intention of cropping it down, you know, to suit the scale that the foreground was shot at. So let's get into it. So with that first image out of the way, it's time to start looking at compositions for this second image. Now, like I said, this peninsula that I'm standing on out here doesn't actually line up with the center of the Milky Way when it's gonna be laying down flat on that western horizon or southwest horizon. It's sort of, this point's more due west, so this is gonna to be to the right-hand side of center. But I think it might work, but I think the thing that's gonna make it work is adding that human element. So if there's nothing else in this foreground, I don't know that it would work, but what I want to do is something that's pretty cliche. I'm going to do a selfie and not the, not the, you know, holding a torch or anything like that. I think I'm going to do set up with the camera and a tripod out on that peninsula and do a selfie of me taking a photo or pretending to take a photo, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And I think just adding that human element out there on that peninsula We'll just make it work and like i said it's just going to be to the right of center but i think it'll make a really cool leading line maybe towards that um the rule of thirds intersection on that right hand side of the frame and all these rocks around the front should actually frame um the mid ground really really well so that's the plan with that and i'm actually thinking of using a flash to light to light myself up i've never done it like that before but that's the great thing about using a 24 mil lens is because it's so wide I should be able to use a flash for the individual frame of the foreground that's got me in it and then still be able to um, stitch a panorama together for the foreground. Um, I hope that works and Richard Taddy, you'd be proud of me, mate, using a bit of lighting. <laughs> but we'll just have to see how it goes. One thing I'm going to have to be really, really careful of is out on this peninsula, it's just sheer cliffs all the way down into that dark abyss, <laughs> abyss down there. So it's actually quite intimidating standing up here in the pitch black under pure Bortle 1 skies, but yeah, I'm just going to have to manage it the best I can. Maybe crawl around, crawl around on my hands and knees, but I think I'm going to get the flash out and have a bit of a play. Well, that's the foreground all taken care of, and man, was that interesting. I'm definitely no good at taking selfies and, you know, using a flash and those sort of things, but that was a bit of fun anyway, so, you know, we'll just have to see how it all comes up. I ended up doing a focus stack, um, three images, three image focus stack for the foreground, just because this thing's so close to the foreground, um, and obviously the horizon line, so I wanted to get, get it sharp from front to back, so um, it all looks pretty good in camera, and... Now it's time for the important bit, ripping into this sky. So I've just done a couple of test shots there and I have to say I'm, I'm pretty chuffed with the, the Sigma 24 um, 
DGDN lens. It's not perfect in the corners, but it's about as close as you're going to get. So it's really, really comparable to that 40 mil um, Sigma Art lens, which is really, really cool. So I'm actually going to shoot it wide open tonight uh, at f1.4, and I'm going to go with settings of ISO 640 and one minute shutter speeds. And what I'm going to do, like I said before, I'm going to use um, or take advantage of using a 24 mil lens, and I'm going to stack each panel. So I'm going to do five. Uh, five images per panel and shoot this full panorama so let's get stuck into it so that's all the images in the bag and what a night I honestly could have just sat here and not taken a single image and just soaked it all in seeing that core sink down in that western sky and just lay flat parallel with the horizon it's just such a unique look and yeah i found myself a bit of a rock here to perch myself on while the camera was snapping away and the tracker was doing its thing and because i was doing five images per panel it just gave me plenty of time to just kick back and just sort of soak it all in um there's a bit of wind picked up tonight so i was really pleased with how the star adventure mini uh handled that wind and you know this is a pretty light setup with this this 24 mil lens and you know little mirrorless camera but as for the 24 mil what do I reckon? I love it. Like I said, it's not perfect in the corners at 1.4, but it's about as close as you're going to get. So um, I'm happy to shoot this wide open and super lightweight design for a mirrorless camera. It's a really, really cool bit of kit. So I think I'll use this a little bit more going forward. So I'm really excited about that. But that's about it. It's cold. I've got a long hike. I'm going to go and get a nice warm bed. I hope you guys enjoy the image. Until next time, cheers guys.